With all the technology available to strip clubs in 2018, do strip clubs still need the DJ? Some say yes, some say no. I'm going to give you, my strip club DJ friends, some tips on how you can protect your strip club DJ job. With all the technology available to strip club DJs in 2018, do we still need a DJ? There are automated DJ programs. There is the ability to play music right from the internet. We can have playlists created in programs like Spotify and YouTube. So, do strip clubs really still need the DJs in 2018? I'll tell you this, if all you do is a strip club DJ, is introduce an entertainer to stage and play songs that she's selected that are in her folder, then there are owners and managers out there that will tell you no. You're probably listening to this and saying, Danny, you're a strip club DJ. Are you saying the strip club should get rid of DJs? Absolutely not. But I am going to say that if you want to keep your job in 2018 and beyond, that you need to pay attention to these three words. Prove your worth. Make sure that you, as a DJ, are doing things that the automated programs and internet sites can't. What I've done today is I have enlisted the assistance of a very special guest. He is the 2016 Exotic, Exotic Dancer Publications DJ of the Year. He's on the board of directors and the secretary of Panda, the Professional Adult Nightclub DJ Association. He is a music reporting DJ for Billboard Magazine and DJ Times. He's my podcast partner from Panda Off the Charts and Panda Top 20. From Columbus, Ohio, my good friend, Alon Fong. How are you, sir? Good, Danny. Great, great to be on the show, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad you could be here, man. Strip Club U. I tell you what, we're talking about DJs and how to keep your strip club DJ job in 2018. And the first thing I want to talk about, I'm going to run a scenario past you. Okay. We're in the club and uh, it's a Tuesday, not a whole lot going on. A couple customers, a couple entertainers. And the DJ decides, well, it's slow, so I'm just going to load a playlist and go talk to some friends at the bar. So he does that and he goes over there and all of a sudden the owner walks in. And what do you think? I mean, the owner's looking over there. He's saying, man, the club's dead. Why is it dead? And then he looks over at the bar and he says, what's my DJ doing sitting over at the bar? So he goes over there and he says, yeah, what, what are you doing over here? He says, well, it was dead. So I, d I just loaded a playlist and, you know, took it easy. So what do you think the owner is thinking when he said it was dead? So I loaded a playlist. <laughs> he's thinking, why in God's name do I have this DJ in my club? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, man, you know, wow, a lot of stuff to answer there. So, yeah, first and foremost, uh, I know at Cahoots, I don't, we don't stream our music. We don't use Spotify. We don't use YouTube, none of that stuff. So, number one is that. Number two is I would never leave my booth and just go hang out and sit down and let a playlist run, period. Um, you know, when it's slower, the beginning of a shift or on, a, on an off night, a night that's traditionally a little bit slower, you have to work a little bit harder. So my philosophy is to build the room one customer at a time. I want to make that one guy have a good time, even if he's not spending, because every customer serves a purpose. Sometimes your first 10 guys aren't spenders, right? But if you hold them and they have a good time and they're smiling and they're kind of sipping on a drink, the next five who come in feel comfortable and will stay. Nobody likes to come into an empty club and an empty room. So you have to build the room. And I, and I really work with my entertainers to explain that to them, to think, to let them know, you got to try right now. You can't just get up there and, circle the pole with, with, with resting bitch face on. You know what I mean? So we're the entertainment. The entertainers and the DJs, we are the entertainment of the nightclub. It's our purpose to entertain. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's not to make money. We can't print money. We don't have gold. We cannot make money. That's impossible. Our purpose is to entertain. So, you know, th that's a big part of it. And you have to pay attention to your room and you have to watch what's going on and you have to put in effort the whole shift. And that's how you turn a crappy night into a good night, a good night into a great night, a great night into a record breaking night. Well, one of the things that I see a lot in this industry, and you and I have been doing this for a while uh, before computers came out, you know, it used to be a skill level that you had to have 
to be a DJ because you had to load the music from CDs or records or tapes or whatever. You had mixers, you had to fade the one into the other. Um, technology has changed all that. We now have automated programs. You can just load a playlist or just load your next 20 songs, put it in autoplay and, and go. So one of the things, technology, it's made it easier to do the basics of being a DJ. And one of the problems we have is we have, um, and I'm not knocking barbacks or anything, because I know you were a barback before you were a DJ, but you know, when the DJ doesn't show up, they just throw a barback up there and just, he loads the playlist and calls a girl. And, and those are the things that are really kind of killing the industry that I guess just like what we were saying, just being a playlist DJ. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I was, a, I was a barback for three years. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, mad respect for the barbacks out there. But uh, yeah, I think technology, like anything, it's meant to be a tool right mm -hmm. so it can make some basics like you said of djing a lot easier but there's so many nuances in our craft okay so it took me years my i remember after i was a dj for about two or three years i thought i was ready for a head dj gig at a, at a mm -hmm. big club i was nowhere near ready i had no clue what i was doing and i remember even six or seven years and i looked back at my three-year-old three-year-old dj self and laugh like yeah you had no clue and even seven years i didn't so you know there's so many little intricacies and nuances that go into the job that you're totally unaware of until you have to actually do it. Um, you know, you said something about uh, the, the technology and, and throwing people in there. And I think I learned, one of the points I wanted to make was I learned more from my managers on duty and I was blessed to work with some of the best managers in the business um, than I did from other DJs because the manager on duty is the one who's gonna correct you every shift, every minute, every time you do something wrong. You know what I mean? Or something he doesn't like for the room. The key difference is the managers at that time understood and knew the importance of their DJs. So they actually knew what they were talking about and correct me in a way that was positive for me and for the club. So uh, it's really hard to train a DJ. The head DJ is not going to be there on the other DJ shifts. You mm -hmm. know, sure. Cause I could train the guys, but that's not what we're paid to do. Unless you're going to pay me a big salary or something to be there 80 <laughs> hours a week. That's not going to happen. You know what I mean? So the managers have to have a key understanding of what is important about your DJ to help the young DJs get better. Good point. You know, I was uh, on Facebook the other day and I read a, a post and I copied it down here. It came from uh, Phil Jordan. Okay. And he, he made a quote, a really good quote. He said, I hate clubs when the DJ says nothing except announce the girls to stage. Might as well have a jukebox. And that was one of the, the statements that I read. And I said, man, that, that would, that's a really good point. What he's making is because if all you're going to do is announce a name and play a song out of a playlist, um, but computers, I mean, the one thing computers cannot do is computers cannot read a room. Computers cannot tell you that I got a group of this age group here or demographics over here. That is where DJs can step up their game and uh, prove their worth, as we'd like to say. And I know you up at uh, Cahoots in Columbus, you've got a really good format. You are really good at reading the room. So what I want you to do is let our listeners know and viewers out there, uh, what is it you actually look for when you are playing to the room? What are, are you looking for toe tapping, uh, people getting into it? Do you scan the room for ages? What, look, give me a little bit of an idea of what you look for. Yeah, all the above. It's such a subtle art, and it really takes years of experience, and you have to experiment with different types and genres of music to see what works um, in, in different rooms. You know, I've been lucky enough to work in a decent amount of markets uh, and in different, different styles of markets and different styles of clubs. So that helps a lot as well. So first and foremost, you have to have the music format to read a room. If you're letting your entertainers pick all their music, it doesn't matter if you're trying to read a room because you have to play what they want. So you're kind of stuck there. Um, but if you are a club where the entertainers don't have a lot of say or no say in the music, ultimately, then you're truly getting to DJ, which mm -hmm. is what we have at Goose. We have an open format. I can play almost any genre of music. Uh, I pretty much can play any genre of music, but not every song from every genre. Right. <clears throat> there. Uh, but yeah, so reading a room, Number one, you know, you have to know what your club wants. What is their target demographic? What is their business model? First, and what is their brand? First and foremost, because the music you play and the format you play is going to determine what that is, right? Then second, you look at the people in the room. Um, you know, do I, I want to make our prime clientele happy, right? So then you're looking, yes, for people tapping their feet, singing along, bobbing their head. Are they smiling and, and being energetic? That sort of thing. Um, you're looking at the age of the crowd in the room. Uh, all those things. You also, you know, a, an element of it, I, I do consider my entertainers, of course. I'm watching what entertainers on stage, what does she perform best to, um, what maybe what costume she has, what songs can I play 
that will accent her costume or her look that will make the gentleman pay attention or take notice more. Um, all these things are a big, uh, there's so many little variables that go into it. And, you know, reading a room, another kind of going back to what we said earlier, reading a room, especially when we're talking about the slow part of the shift, a lot of DJs, in my opinion, make the rookie mistake of playing slow music because it's slow. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, you know, if you play one or two songs, it's slow, that's one thing, that's fine. But when you get in that rut of playing a bunch of slow crap, don't do that. You want to have energy in the room. You want it to have to be fun so that when the people coming in the door who maybe can't see your stage yet are paying their cover fee and, and talking to the front door people, they're going, oh, wow, it's a party in here. It's a, there's energy in here. You know, I have a house mom or girls come up all the time. They'll come up from the dressing room and they'll be like, what's, what's going on? Why is it so slow? We thought it was a party in here. It was jamming because of how I was DJing because they can hear the music in the dressing room. You know what I mean? So there's so many elements that go to it and it's very subtle art, but it starts with, does your club have format? And does your club have a branded sound uh, that allows you as the DJ to actually have to read the room? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's a difficult thing to learn how to please entertainers while still holding on to your format. Yeah. Danny. Hey, by the way, I know you just started at a new club, New York, New York and Dayton, Ohio. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, yes. you had one of those streaming DJs, right? <laughs> the guys who use uh, Spotify or YouTube and folders and all that stuff. So how did you and your team, change the culture at New York, New York to, to be more of a, a open format and read a room type of style of DJ. Oh, that was a, that was a nightmare. I'll tell you, you know, I went in there and uh, what you were saying, I, I took over the previous DJ was one of those YouTube DJs that, you know, basically the girl comes up and says, I'm on stage next. I want this song and that song. And every girl came up and wanted to pick their two songs. And if he didn't have them, he just went to YouTube and downloaded them so he would have them without even hearing the song would just play a song off of YouTube. <laughs> and, and so I went in there and I mean, one of my first things I went in, I said, listen, I don't want to be a jukebox operator. You know, I want to be a DJ. If all you want is somebody to play whatever these girls want and not care about the customers and what they want and what's best for your room, then I'm not your guy. They said, no, we want you to come in here. You've got full reign. So First thing we did, you know, I, I, I didn't want to be a total prick and just say, you guys don't get any say. So, you know, I, I try really hard to stay with a girl's um, general genre of music. If she's an sure. R&B girl, I try to stay in the R&B. You know, if she's a rap girl, well, I try to get her a pop rap, rap, a pop rap song. That's easy to say, you know, in, in her two song set and then try to mix it up a little bit. But a lot of it is convincing the entertainer that you know what you're doing that you've got their best interest in mind. And one of the things that I always tell people is my main job is not to please you with music. My main job is to help you make money. And that's really what I want to do. And your music is not helping you make money. As you know, it's not about the end of the night. Did the DJ play the songs I love? Well, that's not my main job here. And if you want that, go work at a club that's got a jukebox and you can put a buck a song in and listen to whatever song you have. So it was, it's been an interesting, um, I've been there about three months now mm-hmm. and it's been an interesting time. Most of the girls have come through and understood what I'm doing. They're making more money. Some of the girls got mad and left, yeah. but, uh, you know, I, uh, enough girls have come in since I've been there that it makes a big difference. The club's doing a whole lot better. And I have been able to prove firsthand that yes, a DJ can make a difference. The club wasn't doing all that well and it's getting better every, That's every awesome. single week. You, know, you have a great point, Danny. I think uh, one of the things I've stressed for years is you have to be an advocate and, and be a, create a team with your entertainers. You know, I, I spend a lot of my time, you've been in the booth with me talking to them, especially new entertainers, uh, about business concepts and trying to treat them like business women. And, you know, you and I are business partners. You know, mm-hmm. we're the entertainment. Uh, we work together to, to make this room go. And so when, when you treat them with that level of respect, uh, most of them will they're listening will definitely perk up, you know, when you're not talking down to them and all that sort of thing. So yeah, you've got to include the entertainers in the process without a doubt and explain to them why a lot of clubs just say, well, you can't hear music X because I said so nobody <laughs> likes because I said so, you know what I mean? You're not going to get a good reaction from that. So yeah, I think, you know, and I know you, and I know you're turning that, that, that format around there and, and how you do things. So I'm excited to see where your club goes, man. Yeah, doing good, doing good. Well, Alon, um, before I let you get out of here, one sure. final thing. Um, a point that I really want to make uh, for DJs is stay off of your owner's radar or stay off of your manager's radar. In a negative way. 
Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, so your your manager's got a million things going on in, in the club. He doesn't need to be thinking about, is my DJ playing the right music? Is he doing the right thing? Is he uh, doing the right promos? Things like that. Is he saying the right stuff? Um, do what you're supposed to do. Do your job. Don't be a pain in the ass. Don't constantly, I mean, if you've got a problem, obviously you can talk to your manager about it. But, you know, the, the, there are DJs just constantly, well, this girl didn't pay me. That girl didn't do this. This girl did that. Just constantly being a pain in the ass. And, and another thing, recently on Facebook, there's this big thing about a girl made $1,000. How much should my tip be? Oh, my God, I didn't get my $100, my 10%. Well, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you something. Computers, they don't ask for a tip out. Right. You know, so, again, prove your worth. Do your job. Uh, stay off of your manager and owner's radar, and, uh, and and that's how you're going to stay relevant and keep your job in 2018. Uh, Alon, any final thoughts? Yeah, I think in general, you know, there's always something going on in every nightclub, in every job, really. It's, it's a life thing. Uh, so you can mention it once or twice if there's an issue, and though your superiors or whoever you go to will either address it or they won't, and then it's out of your control. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big, big believer in worry about what you can control. So what I can control is DJing to the very highest level of my ability every minute of every shift I work. That's all I can control. I can't control the entertainers. I can't control the customers. I can't control my management. I can, you know what I mean? So in those moments when I get frustrated, we all have crap that happens at work. So, you know, I get it. But when I get that way, I'm like, you know what? Focus on the DJing. Mm -hmm. well, you know, say something if you can, and then move on. And then stay up, you know, you know bitching and complaining at work. To, to all your coworkers and all that does nothing but make everyone negative or bring everybody down. Exactly. We have to be the leaders of positivity in the nightclub. We're the voice on the mic. We're, we're the, our music. If we let that mood affect the music we're playing, so we start playing angry and negative music, then you're <laughs> affecting your room negatively. So exactly. yeah, do your job at a high level and stay off your owner's radar and get on your owner's and boss's radar with how good you fucking DJ. <laughs> There's a concept. Good point. Good point. I'll tell you what, Alon, man, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm so glad that you came on the show today. And for my first guest on a Strip Club U episode, and uh, you come on again sometime when we want to do this again? Anytime, brother. I love doing this stuff with you. And, you know, uh, feel free to check out the Panda Top 20 or Panda Off the Charts. Shameless plug. <laughs> pandatop20.com pandaoffthecharts.com <laughs> stripclubu.com djdannymyers.com it's all right there man thank you guys uh, don't forget like the show share the show and we'll catch you on the next one